Sutra. His nature does not engage in harsh speech, that is, cruel, malicious speech, coarse, white speech, speech that brings suffering to others, speech that provokes anger and hatred in others, blunt speech, furtive speech, vile and evil speech, cheap and vulgar speech, speech unpleasant to hear, speech that does not delight the listener, angry, hateful speech, speech that burns the heart like fire, speech bowed up in resentment, heated, irritating speech, disagreeable speech, displeasing speech, speech that can destroy oneself and others, all such types of speech as those he completely abandons. He always utters kind, encouraging speech, soft and gentle speech, speech that delights the mind, speech pleasant to the listener, speech that makes the listener happy, speech that well enters into people's hearts, elegant and refined speech, speech agreeable to most people, speech that gladdens most people, and speech that brings joy to body and mind. Commentary, his nature does not engage in harsh speech, the Bodhisattva doesn't have any harsh speech in his own nature at all. That is, he does not utter cruel, malicious speech. He would never speak words as hurtful to people as poison, which make people die from rage as if they had been poisoned. He doesn't use coarse, wide speech, being very rough and unreasonable. He doesn't use speech that brings suffering to others with one sentence making people very feel very troubled and pained. He does not use speech that provokes anger and hatred in others. He does not use blunt speech This is telling people off to their face or indirect furtive speech. This is gossip behind their backs, vile and evil speech that is low and wicked talk or cheap or vulgar speech speech so this people that what one says is utterly worthless. He does not use speech unpleasant to hear, so that when one talks, no one wishes to listen, or speech that does not delight the listener. Sometimes when one talks with people, they don't like it. Do you hear that? Speech that people don't like is a kind of harsh speech he does not use angry, hateful speech. When some people talk, they make people get angry and store up their hatred. He does not use speech that burns their heart like fire. There is another way of talking that is just as hard for people to endure as having fire burn their hearts. The Bodhisattva does not use speech bowed up in resentment. When one talks this way, one leaves a permanent resentment burning in people. He does not use heated, irritating speech so that as soon as one starts talking like this, it makes people upset and afflicted or disagreeable speech, talking in a way that makes people really not want to listen. He does not use displeasing speech. Now the Sutra is telling you about all these various ways of talking. So now you can put all your effort into studying how to talk this way and go out to harm people, hurt them and upset them with a single phrase. Before you heard the Sutra, you never suspected there were so many ways to upset people with your words. But now you've heard the Sutra, you have mastered them all. The Bodhisattva does not use speech that can destroy oneself and others. This kind of talk, when uttered, is a wounding to oneself and it also wounds others. All such types of speech as those, the different ways of talking just listed, which are all examples of harsh speech, ways of creating evil karma from uttering evil words, he completely abandons. The Bodhisattva gives up all those ways of talking that create evil karma. 
He always utters kind, encouraging speech. He always talks in a way as kind and beneficial to living beings as much the in water. He uses soft and gentle speech. He always talks in a very gentle and harmonious manner to you and uses speech that delights the mind. He puts people's minds at ease and makes them very happy. His speech is pleasant to the listener. Before it was speech that was unpleasant to hear and not a speech that is pleasant to hear, the exact opposite. He uses speech that makes the listener happy. People became unhappy when they listened before and now when they hear, they are particularly happy. Again, the complete reverse. He uses speech that well enters into people's hearts. When one talks, people find it very sweet and delightful. He is elegant and refined speech. One talks in a very lofty manner, in a very refined and controlled way. So when people listen, they want to talk like that too. And one becomes a model for speech. He uses speech agreeable to most people and speech that gladdens most people. That makes lots of people glad in body and mind. And he uses speech that brings joy to body and mind. In body, one is so happy, one jumps for joy, and one becomes very happy at heart as well. Sutra. His nature does not engage in loose speech. The Bodhisattva always delights in thoughtful, is a mind speech in appropriate speech, in true speech, meaningful speech, lawful speech, speech that occurs with way principle, skillfully taming and regulating speech, speech reckoned and measured according to the time and which is decisive. This Bodhisattva, even when making jobs, always weighs his words, so how much less would be would he deliberately pour out scattered and abandoned talk? His nature does not engage in greed. The Bodhisattva concerning others' wealth and property, as well as things owned and used by others, does not give rise to greed. He does not wish for them or seek them. Commentary, his nature does not engage in loose speech. The Bodhisattva always delights in thoughtful is a mind is a mind speech. What is loose speech? It means that ridiculing people or intimidating people or making people who hear it have defined thoughts. When the Bodhisattva talks, he doesn't say I uh, just say whatever he pleases. Before he talks, he thinks over what he's going to say and examines it well, and then he says it in only appropriate speech. When he talks, it has to be at just the time he is supposed to talk. If it isn't time to talk, he won't talk. He never say, I'm going to go ahead and answer questions I shouldn't answer. That would be to speak inappropriately, not knowing when it was the right time to talk. What he says is tr in true speech, very accurate and genuine without the least bit of falseness. When he talks, it is meaningful speech. What he says has principle and is reasonable. At all times, when the Bodhisattva speaks, it is a lawful speech, speech in accord with Dharma. If it were talk not in accord with Dharma, he wouldn't speak it. His is speech that accords with the way principle. What the Bodhisattva says has to be in accord with the way principle and not opposed to it. He uses skillfully taming and regulating speech. The Bodhisattva in teaching and transforming living beings uses very skillful and clever expanding methods to tame and subdue them. His is speech reckoned and measured according to the time and which is decisive. According to the occasion, he estimates and measures his words and they have certainty to them. 
this bodhisattva, even when making jokes, always weighs his words. Even when he cracks a joke, he thinks it over and asks himself if it is a joke he can make, whether it is appropriate or not. So how much the less would he deliberately pour out scattered and abandoned talk? He would be even less likely to come out with confused and scattered talk. His nature does not engage in greed. The Bodhisattva's nature is not greedy. He is not greedy for sexual misconduct. The Bodhisattva concerning others' wealth and property, as well as things owned and used by others, others' possessions and the things they use daily, does not give rise to greed. He would never become greedy or grasping. He does not wish for them or seek them. He'd never say, I really like that. I'd really like to get that. Seeing people and telling them to give him gifts. One shouldn't be so greedy no matter what anyone gives you. If you can do without it, do without it. Don't be greedy and seek for things. And then no matter where you go, everything will go well and nothing will go badly. Sutra. His nature is free from anger and hatred. The Bodhisattva towards all living beings constantly brings forth a mind of kindness, a benefiting mind, a mind of pity and sympathy, a happy mind, a compatible mind, a mind of accepting and gathering them in. He wants and for all abandons anger, hatred, resentment, malevolence, rage and irritation. He is always considerate and cooperative in his conduct, humane, kind, and helpful. He is further free from daring views. The Bodhisattva dwells in the proper paths. He does not practice astrology or divination. He does not grasp at evil precepts. His mind's views are proper and upright. He does not deceive. He does not flatter. Towards the Buddha, he, the Dharma and the Sangha, he brings forth decisive faith. Commentary, his nature is free from anger and hatred. When the Bodhisattva cultivates, he very naturally, in his own nature, becomes free from anger and from hatred. The Bodhisattva towards all living beings, the Bodhisattva who cultivates the Bodhisattva way, and accumulates all kinds of goods towards the living beings of the night drama realms, constantly brings forth a mind of kindness. He at all times has thoughts of kindness and compassion, wishing to give living beings happiness. He has a benefiting mind. He is always benefiting all living beings. That's the kind of mind he should have. He has a mind of pity and sympathy. He always thinks of living beings as pitiful, and he has much sympathy for them all, and so he always helps them. He has a happy mind. The Bodhisattva in his mind is always very, very happy, and he never worries. The Bodhisattva has a compatible mind. He always gets along with living beings and is kind to them. So living beings all like them. He has a mind of accepting and gathering them in, in. He can also gather in and accept all living beings. He once and for all abandons anger. He gets rid of his temper, his anger, once for all, once and for all, as well as hatred, resentment, malevolence, rage, and irritation. He stops hating. He also gives up resentment and dislike. He is always considerate and cooperative in his conduct, humane, kind. He always considers how he can cooperate with others. He is humane and kind towards all living beings, and he sympathizes with them all, and he is helpful to all living beings. He is further free from dead views. 
Bodhisattvas at all times maintain proper knowledge and proper views and stay far away from their own knowledge and their own views. The Bodhisattva dwells in the proper paths. The Bodhisattva always dwells in the eight proper paths. He does not practice astrology or divination. The Bodhisattva does not consult the book of changes to find out if something is going to be lucky or unlucky. He doesn't use it. Use it. People can know about the principles of the book of changes, but if you are practicing the Bodhisattva way, you don't need to do divination. Why not? The superior person asks about calamities and does not ask about blessings. The superior person asks whether there are going to be disasters or not. He doesn't ask, for example, if I gamble, can I make a million dollars? He doesn't ask about his rewards or blessings, wondering what good things am I going to get, what advantages will I have. Because he is that way, the Bodhisattva who practices the Bodhisattva path does not need to ask about whether events are going to be lucky or not, since he doesn't have to find out whether something is auspicious or inauspicious. He doesn't need to practice divination or astrology. The Bodhisattva is not afraid of disasters, so he doesn't have to ask about them. Whether things go for him or against him, he accepts them all. He takes whatever he has coming to him. He, for this reason, he doesn't practice fortune-telling and the like. He does not grasp at evil precepts. The Bodhisattva also does not maintain the precepts of cattle or dogs. For example, in India, there are people who adhere to the behavior of dogs and cows hoping to be reborn in heaven, but the Bodhisattva doesn't discipline himself in that way. His mind's views are proper and upright. His mind is proper and upright, and his views are proper and upright too. The straight mind is the way place. He is not crooked. He does not deceive. He would not be able to lie under any circumstances to treat people. He does not flatter. Also, he would never flatter people or play up to them. Towards the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, he brings forth decisive faith. He brings forth the mind of decisive faith towards the Buddha jewel, the Dharma jewel, and the Sangha jewel. He would never be able to have any doubts. Sutra, disciples of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, in this way, protects and maintains the ten wholesome karmic paths constantly without interruption. He further makes the following reflection. All living beings who fall into the evil destinies without exception do so because of the ten unwholesome karmic acts. Therefore, I should myself practice proper conduct. Why is that? If I myself am not able to cultivate proper conduct, it would be impossible to make others cultivate it. Disciples of the Buddha, this Bodhisattva Mahasattva further makes the following reflection. The ten unwholesome karmic paths are causes for undergoing rebirth in the house as an animal or as a hang hungry ghost, the ten wholesome karmic paths are causes for receiving birth as a person or as a god up to the station of the summit of existence. Furthermore, when the supreme grade of these ten wholesome karmic paths is cultivated by means of wisdom, and when one's mind is low and inferior, and when one fears the three realms, and because one is deficient in great compassion, and when one's understanding comes from hearing the sounds of others, one accomplishes the vehicle of a sound hearer. Furthermore, when the supreme grade of these ten wholesome karmic paths is cultivated to purity, and when one has not been taught by others but becomes enlightened 
on one's own. When one is not fully endowed with great compassion or expanded means, when one is enlightened through understanding of profound dharmas of causes and conditions, one accomplishes the vehicle of those solitarily enlightened. Furthermore, when the supreme grade of these ten wholesome karmic paths is cultivated to purity, and when one's mind is vast and limitless, when one is endowed with compassion and sympathy, when one uses expanding means to gather in beings, when one brings forth great vows, when one does not abandon living beings, when one seeks the great wisdom of all Buddhas, when one purifies and regulates all the Bodhisattva grounds, when one purely cultivates all the paramitas, one accomplishes the vast, great conduct of a Bodhisattva. Furthermore, as to the most supreme great of these ten wholesome comic paths, when one has purified all modes up to and including certifying to the ten powers and the four fearlessnesses, then one accomplishes all Buddha dharmas. Therefore, I now equally cultivate the ten wholesome paths and I should bring them all to perfect purity. The Bodhisattva should study such expectant means as those.